the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. Ebro, Laura, and Rosenberg, and our guest today, the Laura, this is the newest <laughs> signee, the first Cuban-American woman ever signed to WWE, <laughs> Valerie Loreda. How are you? Valerie! Welcome. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. And it's an honor to be the first Cuban American woman, but also a big win for all Latinas. You yeah. Know? It's 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 a very cool that's that's mm -hmm. I knew Laura, I knew when this got offered to us. <laughs> I knew Laura would have an appreciation um, um, for being the first Latin woman to yes. do something. Where I are think you it's from? well my family's from Guatemala. Oh, okay. Very yeah, cool. so tell us a little bit about about your background though, Ana, because um <laughs> how you grew up and okay. and your love for your sports. So, I come from a family of immigrants. I'm first generation American and they immigrated from Cuba to Miami. I was born and raised there my whole life and I felt like my whole life my destiny was to represent my culture and I did it in MMA for 5 years and now becoming the first Cuban American woman, I feel like who better to represent not only Cuba, but the 305 where I'm from than me. <laughs> <laughs> well All right, said. so let's go back, though. Yes. Tell us, how does a young girl growing up in Miami get into MMA? Okay, so my dad has owned a martial arts school in mm, okay. Miami for 34 years. Wow. He's an 8th Dan Grandmaster. Wow. And my mom was the captain of the battle net. You know the batons that they would throw? Yes, yes, yes. She was a cheerleader. And my mom wanted her daughters, because we're three girls, all black belts, to be feminine and elegant. So we were dancers, cheerleaders, piano, ice skating, everything. And my dad was a hardcore martial arts instructor. So I kind of did both my whole life. My dream was always to go to the Olympics. I thought that was going to be my platform to make it in the world or get recognized. That didn't happen. My mom got diagnosed with leukemia. She's fine now. She had a bone marrow transplant. On Tuesday was her six-year remission birthday. Wow. Amazing. I know, and Amazing. we were flying here to New York to announce. So it was just such a good week for us. <laughs> That's so great. And then I saw Ronda Rousey on the TV. Ironically, Ronda's in the WWE. And I said, wow, she's beautiful. She's representing her traditional martial art, uh, judo. I could do that. I've dedicated my whole life to taekwondo, and I'm a master. And I want to be on a stage like that. I could do it. So I just started training hard. Taekwondo's just kicks. I started doing jujitsu, judo, grappling, the whole thing. And I debuted pro in 2019 in Connecticut. And then my second fight was at the Madis Madison Square Garden. Wow. Which card was that? Who was the, do you know who the main <laughs> event was? Do you remember? I don't remember. Wow. <laughs> it okay. was 2019, but that was my second fight. Wow. Professionally in New York. And wow. Then after that, I just kept fighting. I was the first female fighter to fight during COVID for Bellator. Mm. And that's when I did a, a fight, a big knockout, and then I did a side saf. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when people started seeing me, not just as a fighter, but also as an entertainer. They started to see my personality. Then I fought a few more times after that, and then WWE gave me this opportunity, and the rest is history. Would you... It, it, one of the great things about WWE is that for people who enjoy, you know, mm -hmm. martial arts, uh, fighting in any way, but also enjoy entertainment, mm -hmm. it allows you to sort of be connected to the fighting part of your personality yeah. while also not having to go into combat. Yeah. Like, because that is a different mm -hmm. thing. So is any part of you sort of excited about not <laughs> having to have those weeks when you're leading up to a fight and you know someone's going to try to kill you? You know, it's a different type of pressure. And, you know, you don't, if you're not a fighter, you don't really understand that pressure. But the feeling going into a cage when you know the person in front of you is trying to hurt you is scary, no matter who you are. You are scared to go in there. But now, like, it's WWE, but it's still impact. It's still combat. It's still physical. It's extremely tough on your body. And now there's an art part yeah. that you have to include also. And, you have to then, perform correctly also. Exactly. And, and hit then, your spots and do everything you do. There's so many uh, dynamics to this that you have to be aware of in that ring at all times. But it's like show business. It's glamour. It's storytelling. It's production. It's fighting. It's just beautiful. It's, it's everything I love in one place. And... I just feel like I'm going to be really good at this. You know, I, I already know the perfect person for you to, to work with. Who? Okay. He's a good friend of mine. He can be a little bit of a jerk sometimes, but okay. he's a good friend of mine. And uh, his his Instagram at is actually the305MVP. 
MVP would be the, a perfect person to give you a little bit of tutelage. MVP, mm. of course, he, he loves. Oh, I don't want to mess up what his art is. That he's uh, his martial okay. art. He's, um, I think, jujitsu. Oh, I think okay. I think MVP is jujitsu. Um, but also, he's of course a great wrestler he's a great manager and he reps the 305 i mean really? all day every like, i'm gonna make that introduction this yeah, week yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. going out to money in the bank in las vegas I'm right going tonight to wow. las vegas for money in the bank i'm super excited because my family is also coming and they've never seen a wwe show <laughs> oh so wow. my mom's gonna see it for the first time they're all here with me now tell us about the experience of going to wrestlemania this year oh my goodness so it's a funny story because at the beginning i didn't want to go I was supposed to just be in L.A. partying with my friends, and I was so stuck on fighting, fighting, fighting. Like, that was just my goal. And I, I always knew I wanted to be a superstar. I just didn't know when. I didn't know when the opportunity would come, et cetera. And then my manager was like, Valerie, just trust me. Come and watch it. You're going to understand what I mean. So they flew us out, and I went. And the moment I walked into that suite, and I looked down and I saw WrestleMania, I just had goosebumps. Like I was crying immediately. It was, it's just a different, like I don't think anything compares to that. And if you're not there, you can't feel like the crowd, like the the beautiful production, just the show. It's just, it was incredible. It's um, it's such a good gig in the sense, like becoming a pro wrestler in 2022, a sports entertainer, whatever you want to call it in 2022, it, it's it's a, not the same as becoming one in 1985, okay? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's still going to be very hard. Mm -hmm. It's physically demanding. Right, it's right. emotionally demanding. Yeah. It's time-consuming. It's all of I mean, you're going to yeah. bust your ass. Yeah. But in my opinion, relative to – how old are you? 23. 23. Relative to having to spend the next 10 years fighting mm -hmm. where you're physically having to fight and get mm -hmm. your head pounded in every day. And by the way – if you're not winning fights, your pay grade isn't get going up. It's messed up. You're, it's hard. MMA pay is messed up. It is messed you. up. Like it, you only get you get paid half of your money if you lose. Like Ugh. you know how hard like we work and sacrifice and get hit every day for that. You and know? then you get injured, and then you get less money. And then you get injured, and then you're out for like six months. Or right. if you, have a, you know what I mean. And then you got to work your way back up. Now I the know. next time you're fighting, they're giving you even less money. Yeah, it's it's really sad. So like honestly, you can go to WWE. Get a salary, mm -hmm. you know. You get the money you make off merchandise, like yes. you have. There's yeah. and and you don't have to yeah. physically get your head beaten yeah. in every week, every couple months. But, you know, I'm I'm passionate about martial arts, so like for me, that really wasn't a factor. You know, the money is good and stuff, but that wasn't like my driving factor. My driving factor is the fact that I could be the first of my kind. You know, and I just know that. I could do it, you know, and there's something very beautiful about being able to just give back to your culture and community, especially with everything that's happening, you know, and I just want to inspire young Latinas, you know, that also that they have different bodies because a lot of girls, you know, they have a generic look and I go up and weight a lot. I lose weight a lot. I have cadera. I have, you yeah. know, yeah, I yeah. have masita, you know, I eat like a Cubana. I, I eat yeah. like a Latina and our bodies are different and I want girls to understand that that's okay. Like... Latina women are beautiful and we're different and I want to bring that spice into the WWE. Um, I also think one of my favorite parts about the WWE is how, like, the, the fans. Yeah. When you step in <laughs> into any arena, you see everything. Yeah. From children to moms yeah. to super fans to grandpas to, yeah. you know, and, and racially, rappers. It's, yeah. yes. Every background of Com human, of being Completely person. racially diverse. Yeah. Like, it's so much that. fun. It's yeah. so much fun because WWE touches everyone. Yeah. And the feeling, like, Laura was able to witness it last time we went to the show at the Garden and uh, our co-host Ebro brought his daughter and she had never been. And when you see a little girl's eyes light yeah. up you know, when she saw like Bianca Belair yeah. watching her eyes light yeah. up, it's, I think that feeling, yeah. Yeah. it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. not, let me just put it this way. That's not the same thing as MMA. Yeah. You're not getting, in MMA, you get a lot yeah. of things. Yeah. You don't get little children looking up to you the yeah. same way. WWE is yeah. a different animal in that way. And I think you're going to find it yeah. so satisfying. And for me, that's the most exciting part because in MMA, one thing I was able to do was change a stereotype. You know, I started bringing in the glamour to this sport and for my press conferences, I'll dress up, put on heels. I would fight with my eyelash extensions on and a little blush and contour. 
And I liked that because, you know, you don't have to look a certain way to pursue something that you want to do in your life. And for me, my biggest reward in MMA was seeing how parents were putting their daughters in martial arts because I was like, that's what taught me confidence. And it made me feel like I could always defend myself. And I was powerful, you know, and I feel like every woman should feel that. What can you can you just tell us a little bit or tell me um, mm -hmm. a, a little bit about being Cuban American from Miami? Because like <laughs> sometimes we talk about yeah. Latinx stuff in way too general terms. Mm -hmm. when the fact is culturally, country to country, yeah. the Miami Cuban experience is a very specific yeah. Latin American experience. Right. Yeah. So t what what is what you say representing your culture? What yeah. is the culture of Cuban Americans in Miami all about to you? I feel like Miami is its own world of its own. It's completely different than the rest of the United States. And in Miami, we just have a way of living that's like we celebrate things. We're very family oriented. You know, my grandparents raised me, you know, we love our cafecito. We love our cafe con leche, pan tostado. Um, we're just very close and it's just a slang, a way of being. We all, they're very supportive. Miami, I've gotten so much support from from the MMA community because I was the only girl representing. But I think to me, it's just representing our Cuban culture and bringing um, awareness to everything that's happening, you know, and that really like people sacrificed a lot and were treated very bad in order to come to Miami. And my grandparents came here giving me the American dream, you know? So I feel like for me, I want to represent that, you know, Cuba is very close to Miami, but once you got here, you know, my grandparents were able to start from nothing in Miami, work their way towards giving their grandparents, I mean, grandkids, a, a, the future, you know, and I was a product of that. My mom came here at eight years old. My dad came here at 14 years old. And my mom's a, a special ed teacher now in school. My dad oh. started martial arts school. And the three of us just worked very hard, and now I've made it here today. So you're an only child? I have, we're, I'm, I have two little sisters. Two little sisters. Okay, got it. Uh, um, we're all black belts. Uh, <laughs> all, all black belts. Wow. And fun fact, my mom was pregnant with me doing her black belt test because my dad was, yeah. So your mom's a black belt too? Yes. All of us are black belts. And my sister, Natalie, she's 21, and she's also a kickboxer. She hasn't fought pro, but she's also a kickboxer. And the little one, she's a black belt, and she's a gymnast, and she's an actress. So Wow. We have a family, like, line here. Um, who is on, who do you look up and see on the WWE roster mm -hmm. who excites you, the idea of getting to work with them? Charlotte Flair. Mm. She actually followed me, and she messaged me. Really? And I felt a lot of support because when I went to WrestleMania, like, I was watching her. And I just saw her star power, you know, the way she's able mm -hmm. to engage people, bring it in. And I just thought it was just so amazing. So I've been studying her a lot. And when I was at my tryout in Orlando, she, I was like, I'm nervous. And she's like, you're okay. Talk with Smiley. I say hi. And she was so cute. So I really like her. And I've been watching a lot of her promos and the way she works the mic and and wrestles and i just i love her well, it's, it's gonna be so much fun because in well in this happens in all cultures but i'm just speaking on latin culture because this is what i know right like we love a soap opera yeah we love like, a good story yeah, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> of course. so i think it's gonna be so much fun watching you and watching your yeah. story unfold yeah, i, I want to do some spanglish in there too like i don't know i feel like i want to be known as a latina on the wwe you know because i am cuban american but my grandfather is peruano and me my great grandparents son de puerto rico oh okay okay and i still have some family over there i still have family in peru so you're very much you are very much yeah. a lot of different things yeah i'm very mixed with latin america i would like to hear the word bochinche used on <laughs> WWE, wwe television <laughs> I'm going to give you guys a well, little bochinche right Well, you're trash talking. You should definitely do it. I need you to be the first person to drop bochinche. Oh, Literally one of my favorite. What are, what so are, um, so uh, ignorant question. I, I, I've been to a Cuban restaurant before, mm -hmm. but I feel like more often than not when I'm eating Latin, it's like Latin fusion kind of food. Yeah. What are the absolute most traditional Cuban dishes? Like croquetas, empanadas, eh, arroz amarillo con pollo. Fricasse de pollo, eh, carne ripiada. Just, it's just like a lot of like meat and rice. Oh, and it's just the best. Salt <laughs> just and the seasoning. Best. And 
sopitas and my abuelita used to make like the best like fela she was like she would cook for a whole family and i will we'll miss her food forever oh well listen we are very excited for you and this opportunity thank you and um you hope it sounds like you have high hopes about your you're going to be reporting to nxt in the yeah. performance center i move july 18th I moved the day before my 24th birthday. So my first day as an official employee there is on my 24th birthday. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so you're going to go to the performance center. You're going to train. Yeah. You're going to get your ass kicked and, and have to work very, very hard. Prove myself every single day. And then, but you have goals, obviously, of making it from NXT mm -hmm. to Raw or SmackDown. Yeah, I have my own little secret goals in my mind because I put like high bars for myself because I know I could achieve it. Because if I have great work ethic and if i apply myself the same way i did with mma it's gonna happen for me because at my tryout in, Orla in orlando i went to the facility for the first time and i worked so hard those four days but i also learned so much and i was staying after every day two hours like i left there crying in tears i don't want to leave i told my i told abraham i'm not leaving from here i'm coming back on monday Wow, you can't do that you know this contract <laughs> i'm not leaving from here like what is there for me miami I am now employee of the WWE, and every week I'm not there. I'm not getting better, you know. I love it. That but is that that warms my heart to hear. Well, we're very excited for you. Thank you. Um, I so, definitely want to make it to WrestleMania. Oh, absolutely! So have fun at Money in the Bank. Yes. And one day at WrestleMania, and one day maybe you'll be here back to promote a show at Madison I'm Square Garden. Right. Imagine that you would know? be a dream come true. Uh, the newest WWE signee, Valerie mm -hmm. Loreda. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.